memory management, interning, and memory management data types and uh, re uh, re reference counting and garbage collection. We will go step by step. So, memory management in Python and other languages, how is it different? Is generally in C, C, you will allocate memory manually and you will free the memory manually, right? Malloc and then uh, free are used. But coming to Python, you don't have to do that. It is automatically doing the memory management. So Python automatically does the memory management. You don't have to do that manually like in C++, C++ Python. Okay. So interning. So what is interning is interning is a process where Python automatically reuses immutable objects like integer or strings to save the memory when the same values are repeated repeatedly used. So what is the meaning of this? For example, if you write class or if you write name, name equal to rbr like this, then what will happen is an object will be created which will contain rbr and it will be referred by name. Now if you write name1 equal to rbr, name1 equal to rbr, then name1 will also be pointing to the same object which is already available, right? So this is called as interning, right? So what is interning? Interning is when Python automatically uses immutable objects like integers or strings to save the memory when they are used multiple times, right? So what is the main advantage of it? It will avoid duplicate memory allocations, which means if it is already allocated in the memory, you don't have to do it again and again. Okay. Now coming to integers, minus 5 to 256 are already created in the memory. Whenever you use minus 5 to 256 for an integer, that existing object will be referred. So what I mean to say is, in the memory, Python <coughs> will preload the memory with minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, so on till 256, right? Now, if you write any variable as a equal to minus 4, it will not allot, allot a new space for minus 4. It will use the existing minus 4 directly, right? It will directly use it. So, minus 5 to 256 or always present and you don't have to create an object for it okay now memory management in data types one is you have seen that in case of integers it is going to use interns for minus 5 to 256 and uh, yeah so they are reused for example if you see this example let us say a equal to 10 b equal to 10 print id of a print id of b so both of them will have the same ids which means a 10 is already present in the memory and both of them are having the same ids right which means only one object is created two objects are not created here a equal to minus y b equal to minus y if you look at it both have the same id which means both of them are created once only once right so it is not like Again, the object is created. Similarly, a equal to 257, b equal to 257. In this case, in this case, if you observe, in this case, if you observe, actually it is created two times. Why? Because this ID is different and this ID is different, which means 257 is created two times. Here, interning is not used. Okay. Now, memory management in data types. So, what about float? In float, Python does not follow interning behavior. So what is the proof? If you are doing 10, a equal to 10.0, b equal to 10.0, two different objects are created. That is why IDs are different. If you do a equal to 257.01, 257.01, two different objects are created. That is why IDs are different. If you do 5.01, 5.01, two objects are created. That is why IDs are different. So in float, interning is not followed. In integer, it is followed and strings, it is followed. Okay. 
So coming to strings, only for short and frequently used strings will follow interns. Okay, Python in, intern intern interning is follow, followed only for short and frequently used strings, right? So whenever some some strings are multi, you know used many times, or when the string is too short, then it will create then it will use interning. Okay, but then for large strings and dynamic dynamic strings, it is not it it doesn't use interning. Okay. For example, if you write S1 equal to RBR, S2 equal to RBR, and if you try to see the ID, both of them will give you the same ID. Both of them will give you the same ID. What does this mean? Only one instance is created for that object, and both of them are referring to the same instance. Okay. Now RBR sir is teaching TOC and CD compiler design. Okay. Now for this big string, interning is not done. That is why if you see it. Both the IDs are different. See this. Both the IDs are different. Both the IDs are. It might look like both are same, but actually here the difference is. Here is the difference. Both of them are different, which means for long strings we are not following interning, which means for long strings object is created again and again. Okay. Now for dynamically created strings also we are not going to do interning. Okay. So, for example, if name equal to RBR, name one equal to RBR, both the names are RBR only. Then, for both of these, only single instance will be created, right? But then, if I create dynamically a string, for example, we didn't discuss about string set, but I'll discuss about it later. For example, if you write A equal to RB string and C equal to R, and if I write D equal to A plus C, it means that D equal to A plus C. It means that dynamically a string is created, which is nothing but RBR. See this. So if I print D, it is printing RBR, right? Now, if you print the ID of name and name name one, both are same. ID of name and name one, both are same. <laughs> why why is it so? ID of name and name one, both are same. Why is it so? Because it is created only once, it is a small string, and the object is created only once, right? But then, when you dynamically create it, it is going to be created one more time, right? That is why these two IDs are same, and this ID is different. Okay. Now, in Python, there is something called as reference counting and garbage collection. So, generally, what happens is when you are creating many objects at some point in time. There will be objects which have no references, which means no one will be using those objects. In that case, those objects have to be deleted, right? So how are you going to delete that? So basically, you are going to see reference count, and then if the reference count becomes zero, you are going to delete it, right? That is how garbage collection works. The garbage is deleted, right? Okay, so it is done automatically by Python. Now let me tell you an example. Hmm. Let us say. Let us say name. Let us say S one. S one equal to R B R string. S two equal to R B R string. Then what happens in the memory? In the memory, R B R will be created only once, and both S one and S two. Will be referring to it. Both S1 and S2 will be referring to RBR, right? Now, what is the reference count? The reference count of RBR is two. The reference count of this object RBR is two. Why both S1 and S2 is referring to it? The reference count. The reference count is two. Now let us say I write S1 equal to Something okay, okay. Then what happens? S1 will now not point to this, and S1 will point to some other object called okay. Now what happens to the reference count? It will become one. Now let us see. I made S2 equal to some cn. Now what happens? S2 will point to some object called cn. Now what happens to the reference count here? It is zero. Right. Therefore, when the reference count becomes zero, then that object will be automatically deleted by Python. So Python keeps a track of the reference count for every object that is there in the memory. 
okay so okay so if you like this video please subscribe to the channel do like and write a comment it will increase our reach okay we are working really hard to give you this free course and please respect our hard work and do subscribe comment like and share thank you if you want to take my gate classes we go to the website ravindrababuraula.in and you are going to see all my gate classes available there okay so coming to the classes they are all recorded why am i doing recorded why am i not doing live classes is i have thousands of students registering for my courses every year but then if i conduct a live class only 20 or 30 people will be there 20 or 30 that's it maximum is 40 i had the reason is live classes are little bit wasting your time see you cannot watch a live class at 2x speed you have to watch at the pace at which i teach generally i will be very very slow while teaching so if you can go through the live classes you can watch them at 2x speed and you can complete the syllabus very fast 400 plus hours content is there for gate and if you are going to watch them at normal pace it will take 400 hours but if you watch it at 2x speed it will take just 200 hours right so if you want any of my gate classes gate computer science or gate da the price is just 10,000 rupees. It is very, very reasonable for the kind of quality we provide. We have test series, we have doubt sessions, we have videos, we have lecture notes for everything. Even you don't have to write any lecture notes. I will provide you lecture notes for every subject. You just have to sit back, watch the videos at 2x speed and revise the notes. Short notes will be provided, long notes will be provided, formulas will be written in a separate notes. Everything will be there provided to you. You don't have to work hard. And coming to, if you are planning to go abroad, we also have study abroad program. You can go through my number. My number is on WhatsApp. My WhatsApp number is in the website. If you are planning to do masters abroad, that is a very good choice. It is better than doing masters in India. So if you are planning to go abroad, we will help you out right from the, from taking the passport to getting the visa visa us visa right so we will help you out in the entire process okay so do visit the website see what is happening there even dsa course is there for 5000 rupees which is both in python and c plus plus okay so thank you so much